Hi, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this uh, presentation. Um, it's really a pity that we cannot meet up uh, face to face. Um, but anyway, I would like to thank uh, the organizatory team behind this conference uh, in order to um, organize this online platform, which enables us uh, to discuss, despite our uh, current situation, discuss um, our design for service learning in the curricula of the University of Antwerp. And then we are particularly interested um, in discussing um, the current opportunities and pitfalls we encounter with you uh, in the next few minutes. And when I say we are interested in hearing you, I mean the team behind the community service learning projects at the University of Antwerp. And our leading lady is uh, Professor Dr. Gerlinde Verbis. She's Professor of Sociology at the University of Antwerp, and she's academic responsible for all service learning projects within the University of Antwerp. Uh, then we have Eva van Moer, a staff member of service learning and lecturer service learning for uh, the elective uh, course we initiated this year. Um, and then um, uh, I'm Ellen de Krane, I'm project manager um, at Uxia. Uxia is a non-profit organization uh, closely linked uh, to the University of Antwerp, and we are particularly involved in the organization of uh, Flemish Network for Service Learning and uh, involved in the development of pilot projects within the different faculties of the, of the University of Antwerp. So, in the next few minutes, I would like to give you a very short introduction on the central mission statements um, behind the activities of the University of Antwerp concerning the implementation of service learning. Uh, why? They will not be new to you, they will not be very compelling to you, but they are essential to understand uh, our strategies to actually implement uh, service learning as a teaching uh, method within our different uh, faculties. Um, so why community service learning? Uh, because the University of Antwerp wants to be a civic university. And by embedding ser service learning, the academic community of the University of Antwerp is given opportunities uh, to work innovatively in ed education to broaden uh, research and to contribute to their provision of services, which is mainly our social task um, as a, a university. On community level, service learning contributes to sustainable, innovative uh, solutions for social challenges by linking scientific expertise to practice. And in addition, service learning gen generates as well opportunities for students to become more committed and more empowered uh, world uh, citizens who possess the competences needed to function within and contribute to a very complex society. And the university endorses that students are given the opportunity to leave the, um, the university campus and collaborate with local partners and their concrete needs. And that gives students a chance to broaden and deeper their academic competences in practice to strongly guided reflection. So in this way, students do not only learn about society, but they also work for and with society. Um, and in this way, students develop personal, academic, professional and socially relevant competencies that enable them to deal with social changes and challenges. They learn to practice, to take individual or collective responsibility. And that is what we need on, on local levels, national levels, international level, European level. That is that are whatever that are the kind of citizens, citizens we actually need at this point. So how um, do we actually organize service learning at the University of Antwerp? We basically follow two different strategies. The first one is the organization of an elective course named Community Service Learning, uh, good for three ECT credits. Uh, so since 2019-2020, the University of Antwerp organizes uh, 15 university-wide interdisciplinary courses, um, basically each um, um, good for three ECT credits, and this for a Bachelor 2 and Bachelor 3 students. And these courses are closely related to the idea, like team-wise, to the idea of active 
pluralism as well as to the university's mission statement. And in order to stimulate a student's social engagement, students can also follow the course Community Service Learning. You can see it here on the slide. Um, this is an elective course as well, um, good for three ECT credits. It's an annual course, which basically, basically means that it covers first and second semester. And community service learning offers here in this respect an educational framework based on a co-creation in an open-ended process and simulates uh, transformative exper experiences. So service learning requires students to gain curricular uh, credits by performing service that answers the needs of the community. And educational institutions and community organizations design together service learning projects to which students are required to contribute by applying their knowledge and competences. So students combine their experiences with academic knowledge related to at least one of the 15 university-wide interdisciplinary courses listed here uh, on this slide. So in concreto, this means that, by example, if you are a Bachelor II student and you choose to follow the elective course on migration, integration and diversity, you can combine this course with a community service learning project for three uh, ECT credits um, and you have to choose them an organization linked closely linked uh, working within the field of migration integration and diversity by example a cultural center in Antwerp um, which organizes cultural events for newcomers um, so next to um, the organization of the elective uh, community service learning course the University of Antwerp and the Academic Center St. Ignatius of Antwerp, which for, uh, for, for which I work, um, actively promote and particularly support a community service learning pilot project uh, initiated and organized by individual lecturers since 2017 and 2018. Um, and via this bottom-up approach uh, towards implementation of community service learning, we want to introduce ser service learning in as much faculties as possible. Uh, most courses consist of six uh, ECTs, of which three ECTs um, are reserved for the implementation of service learning. Um, the, most of the uh, service learning projects are, are organized within the Department of Sociology and History. So at this point um, in the implementation process of service learning, we are very pleased uh, to see that more and more students as well as docents are actively engaged in one of the service learning uh, projects. Uh, at this point, we count about uh, 60 students who are uh, engaged in one of our uh, serving learning uh, projects. Um, and we see a slow but a steady grow of interest and active involvement of docents as as well um, but in any way we are still in a very embryonal uh, phase and in this phase it's very important we believe to have a clear view on the the benefits as well as the pitfalls of the implementation of our uh, strategies to uh, implement service learning and that's why we're very happy to have the opportunity uh, in at this point in our uh, process to have you as a kind of um, uh, feedback pl platform uh, in order to discuss uh, the following benefits and especially pitfalls. Uh, so first of all, on the positive side, uh, service learning has triggered actually a new way of teaching in our university. So many lecturers have been rethinking their teaching and discover a variety of new and innovative uh, teaching and assessing uh, methods and tools. And for more, most uh, lecturers and students, um, this has proved to be the biggest opportunity and the biggest challenge uh, at the same time. 
Um, and service learning provides opportunities in its way to reflect critically on service experiences. Um, but systematic, um, systematic reflection is relatively new for students and lecturers at the university. The introduction of uh, models and instruments of reflection to enhance and facilitate critical thinking has been indicated as a great added value for lecturers and students. Uh, reflection on action is ideal, by example, for approaching the different kind of social challenges. And by this, I mean the re retrospective contemplation of practice in order to uncover knowledge used in practical situations by analyzing and interpreting information. And this kind of reflection does not only um, increase one's knowledge, but also challenges the theories and concepts held by students, lecturers and organizations. And in addition, the teacher discover actually a new role, that of coach or tutor rather than teacher. And the lecturer, the student and the organization give a variety of input that, that reinforces and deepens the learning experience of the students. And finally, we see that service learning provides great possibilities for differentiation. Service learning enhances the use of formative evaluation where tailor-made feedback is given. The fact that all students in the course are involved in service learning creates a common ground for discussion and group reflection. And students have the opportunity to meet and learn from each other. Students actually become like a critical friend towards each other. And a student is a listener, a sharp questioner, a challenger and an observer. The critical friend looks for a balance between challenge, criticism and support. And this is very important to find the right balance between challenging questions like the critical role and the need for support and confirmation, the friend role. And in interdisciplinary courses, peer learning deepens the quality of reflection because students actually add different kind of academic skills related to their own and different backgrounds uh, related to studies. And service learning creates benefits for all partners because we see that organizations work not only together with socially engaged students, but service learning is more than an internship because of the additional layer of academic deepening. For faculties, service learning is a great opportunity to develop and maintain ongoing partnerships with community partners. And finally, students develop a professional academic and especially social skills, which are so desperately needed in this uh, complex society of today. So without doubt, we are very pleased that the University of Antwerp chose to designate service learning courses on a formal level. Um, and then we explicitly uh, focus on the, um, the implementation of our elective course. But service learning is still unknown for many lecturers and students. Like I said, we, we, we see a steady, but, but a steady growth of interest um, in service learning by lecturers and students. But again, we notice that both lecturers and students are often still hesitant to embrace something that they do not know or, or understand uh, fully. And because of its elective nature, most students who choose to engage into service learning are very committed and often look for a more practical experience during their academic um, career. Um, and they are very willing to take on extra work because they want to make a difference for people in vulnerable situations. But they are the minority. Um, and that's why we often think, do we have to think um, about uh, creating a compulsory course um, on service learning so we not only attract students who are already socially engaged, but also attract students who are less socially sensitive. And then our question is, would that increase our social impact? Uh, that is something we really uh, think a lot of and we, and, and we really um, uh, we don't have a clear view on what to do with that matter. Uh, that's something we really want to talk um, about with you. Um, service learning courses um, next to this are time consuming and confront students with very complex 
challenges and they demand a high level of maturity, responsibility and flexibility. And we notice that even socially engaged students are sometimes reluctant to take up on service learning courses because of its large time investment. And as for lecturers, we notice it is very important to motivate them to adapt uh, service learning as um, a pedagogy. And they are often confused about definitions of terms related to service learning and or intimidated perhaps by obstacles such as teaching in a new way, um, as well um, as administrative issues who take a lot of time and energy. Uh, time and energy that um, some of our docents simply um, don't have. Next to that, um, opportunities to apply theory to practice are um, various and often rig rigorous. Um, I mean, students must integrate and apply their learning from academic knowledge into practice. And this can be based in a discipline or an interdisciplinary and often uh, course and often involve writing a research paper. And in order to achieve um, the desired outcomes for students and communities, the prior curriculum must provide students with the right knowledge and skills. And in service learning courses that work with students with different academic backgrounds, it can be challenging for students and lecturers to meet the same high quality standards concerning the academic deepening. Next to that, it can be challenging for small community organizations to provide a level of oversight and guidance that is necessary for these intensive exper experiences. And it is difficult to estimate in advance whether an organization will prove to be um, a powerful learning environment for students. And working with, with, with multiple community partners and lecturers requires a great deal in terms of content and organization. And service learning courses demand a lot of consultation and adjustment in a short period of time. And not all organizations are able um, to meet up with these kind of uh, demands. So this, um, in a nutshell, um, we are aware of the fact that this was a very broad um, presentation uh, with more questions than answers. Um, that is why we really want um, to have uh, you uh, now uh, thinking with us about one or two um, major aspects concerning the pitfalls of the, imp um, uh, of the implementation of service learning. Um, that's why we would like to formulate one um, or two main questions in the following.